Peter Hill Explains, where I invite you to join the science teaching conversation with me about podcast to YouTube, I suppose, breakthrough. I've just oh, spent a few hours, it must have been, let's see what the time is now, no, or three hours-ish, uh, just slowly hacking away until I'm up to a point where I stick in my uh, dictaphone, whatever it is, I've got it here in front of me, and I put it in the computer, it comes up, it asks a few questions about what the podcast is about, and it goes off and uh, uh, promotes almost to publishing the uh, the podcast, putting it onto Blogger at L. I'm actually really freezing cold here, it's really cold, cold windy day up here in Australia, and um, just uh, it's gone through and produces a whole uh, raft of um, video files with the um, a title picture on which I tried to get an iconic title picture oh I've got a sore back from, from sitting down for so long a, um, yeah the video file and uh, the text goes over the top so there's been a, a few struggle points so, so that's in a you know, gets it put into a directory, a cleaned up directory, and then you jump the entire uh, directory into um, YouTube uh, uploading. Uh, so then it uh, goes to load. You've got to really watch these sorts of things to uh, get it, get the actual um, time that the actual um, applications are running fairly s uh, small, uh, and so. I don't know, to t probably t it'll take um, a minute to do 12 long podcasts, or no, two minutes perhaps, uh, to actually uh, cast together and publish them and send them up to, uh, to Blogger, and uh, possibly, I'm just trying to figure it out, probably 20 minutes, half an hour, for it to convert the audio files. This is several long audio files across. And then it will take possibly, I, I'd shudder to think, possibly three hours, two hours to upload it to YouTube. So you, you don't want your application running for three hours sitting on the back of your computer. You can't sit. G'day. Okay, mate. Uh, oh, it's freezing out here. So, uh, uh, yeah, so just go through. It's amazing how there's these little things which just really trip you up. So one of the things I did was uh, took a, a core iconic image of myself talking and then I converted it to uh, using PaintNet to um, sort of an artistic rendering of it. So there's colours that looks a bit like a comic, comic drawing, although that's a photograph. And then... Um, I uh, went through th a series of processes to uh, uh, flatten it, flatten the image out into a, a linear process, and then um, uh, then reconstruct it into a picture format. Now I really don't know what the picture format corresponds to. It's a, a raw data format, and you can actually, once it's in a picture format, you can actually. Uh, command individual pixels to different colours and so it's a fairly simple process uh, to overlay uh, a comment title, it's a comment title for the YouTube. This is on the picture because uh, if you just have a picture up there but no one, people want to I suppose know what it's about um, and so the actual picture should have a little bit of text on it, I don't know. Perhaps I've got the text too small, I'll have to think about it. Yeah, and the uh, picture, for some reason, uh, it's the, uh, it's, in the picture stuff, it looks fine. It's just when it gets re-rendered back into JPEG, I'll see if I could re-render it back into PNG or something like that. For some reason, it's it's not rendering beautiful, beautifully back, so it's really pretty dodgy. How, how, what it's going, I think the JPEG process doesn't, doesn't work with it well. And so, uh, in order to do that, uh, there's a, a picture uh, in the robotics software, it's called a picture, and um, with all sort of, 
I don't know, uh, programs, subroutines, uh, software things, um, particularly if they're in Xbox or that they're, if they're in a container. So the picture is itself a container, sort of like a container with just a picture. So you could have a container with a Word document, a container with so a robotics control, you know, a robot, you could put, yeah, well, that's how I did the robots. So I just put the robots in containers and then fed the containers uh, commands and methods. So uh, a container uh, has a reference. So you can say uh, a reference is just a name of the container. You know, so you've got a container rather than wire it all around, you can just have something called a reference. And the reference goes into uh, two types of. Uh, Processes which are drop down down menus. One is uh, uh, it's a bit hard to to describe. One is that it's called properties. So where you feed properties to the actual device or the actual thing, and the other one's methods. And methods is sort of a higher level thing which actually picks things out of the container. It's, it's, yeah, it's, so the method's up at the container level. Um, the, the software control. So uh, the properties actually go down and actually manipulate the stuffs inside the container whereas methods actually look at the uh, container from the surface. And so uh, I think this, I've really forgotten what the four, there's always only four methods and I think the uh, Properties can actually vary with you know, anything. You can send, send basically anything methods to it. So this is a fundamental way to control anything: <laughs> is the, the properties and methods. But the um, methods here, I just use the method of get image. So I did my canvas, and then I got the image, and then I read back, read that to um, uh, oh, uh, to a JPEG now. Uh, what was happening was that for some reason um, I'd send a, uh, <coughs> a text to be written on the image and everything would look right but uh, when I got it up and running I ha have it housed in Dropbox so uh, it's automatically backed up and I can run it on um, several computers so uh, if it's in Dropbox it just means that if everything's in Dropbox and it's an executable um, in Dropbox, uh, although you have to install every program that you sort of s siphon off, you have to reinstall it. Just means that you can uh, copy this across you know, a large number of computers and then uh, set the computers up mothering each other. So if one falls over, the next one steps in. So it's a uh, a really basic way, but I had suffered this dreadful thing, sort of eye-watering problem of it just not working the first time, and uh, uh, so I picked up that something was some process was happening too fast, and it wasn't actually um, getting the text data. In, you know, when you left when you tested it, it worked, but when you left it alone to operate by itself it uh, something was happening in a different order and I hadn't locked hadn't locked it down and so uh, I was uh, thinking that I hadn't deleted and cleaned the file it was writing to in sufficient time uh, to go across so I put a, a second delay in there but eventually I, I cracked what it was in that um, uh, the reference I, like, I didn't know this. So the, to, to run a, a method, um, you, you, you know, a methods can be run anywhere because the method relates to an application which is inside the computer. So it's uh, so the reference is just saying what application you're using now. Uh, what I, you had to do is um, uh, call the uh, Oh, is ensure that the reference was called. Oh, I have to remember now. Before it yeah, called well before the actual um, um, 
the actual uh, re uh, reference was activated, the, the method was activated. So what, what happened is that the reference would be called, be making its way up to this region. It would use its original reference from the last running. And so using its original reference, I don't know how it does this, it actually called up old data and put it over. So that's a long story. I cracked that and then um, uh, linking it across such that it takes the uh, uh, title from the podcast as the title of the YouTube, creating an extra little container in the uh, oh, I've got a cluster, putting another cluster variable in and cleaning that up so the title goes cross and the image is just you know it was going to be fantastic it's just a bit woeful at the moment but another podcast another story comes to a close it's been a pleasure sharing this moment in time with you may you discover truly amazing things understand them and tell others thanks for listening